so this year marks Godzilla vs. Hedera's 50th anniversary, and for whatever reason Toho seems to really want to push that. It is a very unique movie in the Godzilla series, the franchise has never put out a film like it before, and even after the many future installments, it's still a very standout title. But it's odd directing and editing, interesting effect choices, and of course, Godzilla can fly. But the question we're asking today is, whatever happened to Godzilla vs. Hedera 2, or Hedera's counterattack as it was most likely to be called? To find the answer to that, we need to go back to the 70s, where the director of the first Hedera movie, Yoshimitsu Bano, had started the concept for the Smog Monster's return. With that being said, let's dive in. Please consider both liking and subscribing, it really helps. 1970. The year Toho broke the trend of not releasing a Godzilla film every year. The previous film, All Monsters Attack, didn't sell nearly as many tickets as its prior movies before it, and is considered to be one of the weakest motion pictures of the franchise. Not only that, but a lot of key players who worked on these films were just burnt out of making them. And the biggest tragedy to come from all this is the loss of Eiji Tsuburaya, the special effects director who has been working on the films since day one of the first Goji movie. Times were indeed rough at Toho, but they pushed on to make more. Producer Tomoyuki Tanaka tasked Yoshimitsu Bano to direct the next film. After being impressed with his work on a motion picture called The Birth of the Japanese Islands in 1970, Bano had free control to make the movie however he wanted, and wanted to center the movie around an environmental message about pollution. Similar to how the first Godzilla had its message around nuclear warfare. The monster created for the picture was a giant pile of sludge named Hedora, named after the Japanese word Hedoro, which is a word used to describe muck and slime. Tanaka couldn't foresee a lot of what was going on throughout the making of the film due to him being hospitalized over a serious illness. By the time he was discharged, the film had pretty much been complete and there was no time to do any changes since they were way over their shooting schedule. Though the film did moderately well at the box office, Tanaka, however, was not happy with the final product. With some stories saying that he yelled at Bono for making such a travesty. Terry Yoshinakano, the effects director of the film, even stated that Tanaka had said to Bono, You ruined the Godzilla series. Bono has stated in future interviews that Nakano said no such thing. In fact, what really transpired between Tanaka and Bono regarding the movie seems up in the air, as Bono has always denied Tanaka ever yelling at him, and that Tanaka said to him that his film was at least an effort on trying something new. Whatever the case may have been, one thing does seem clear that Tanaka didn't like the picture. Hence the reason Bono wasn't able to direct another Godzilla movie. Despite that, he was given another chance a few years later. After the success of Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, Tanaka sought after Bono to direct the next entry, after once again impressing him with his writing on a film called The Great Prophecy of Nostradamus, Catastrophe 1999, or as some may know it as, Prophecies of Nostradamus, which was another movie that tackled pollution. With Bono back aboard the Godzilla train, it was time to come up with some ideas. The first one he spawned was to have Godzilla battle a gigantic starfish creature in Okinawa, which had been mutated from pollution. Apparently the film was going to include friendly space aliens living at the bottom of the sea, and the story had a similar concept to that of the movie E.T. The idea, while interesting, never came to be. Bono had scrapped this project and moved on to another one, this time to bring back Hedera and to make a follow-up to his first Godzilla movie, this time set in Africa. The reason why Bono was so interested in setting the film in Africa was due to a 1966 Italian film he saw called Africa ad Edio or as it was called in America, Africa Blood and Guts, a mono-documentary film showcasing the many lifestyles in Africa at the time. Bono had also traveled to Africa in 1972. His fascination for the continent drove him to wanting to set his new film there. Unfortunately though, that's about all he had for the idea. Hedera's counterattack never made it far at all in production. According to the stories, Tanaka had denied the film due to his displeasement on the first Hedera movie, and Bono claims it was rejected because it would cost too much to make. Ultimately, Bono was dropped from the director's seat and Ishiro Honda would step in to make the next entry, which would go on to be Mechagodzilla's counterattack. Many years later, Hedera would return to the big screens in Godzilla Final Wars, Toho's 50th anniversary film for The Monster King. Before shooting began, Bono had sat down and chatted with the director of the film, Ryuhei Kitamura. 
He was pleased to hear that Kitamura was a fan of the smog monster, and Bono couldn't wait to see how he was included. When the film opened up, Bono was very displeased. Hedera's role in the movie was so minuscule compared to that of the other kaiju that it was more or less a cameo. He also just didn't care for the film as a whole and thought it was kind of lousy. After the movie wrapped up, Toho had officially announced Godzilla's retirement for the next several years, something they would stand by. However, Bono had other plans. A few months after Final Wars was released, Bono announced a new Godzilla movie in 3D IMAX no less and that it would be somewhat of a sequel to that of Godzilla vs. Hedera, but Bono even bringing Godzilla's flight move back. Toho would agree to let Bono make the film, but there was a catch. For one, Toho would have no hand in the making of the picture. They would have the final say in how the movie would look in the end, but that's about it. Also, it would not count as being Godzilla's 29th film. It would just be its own thing. All they had to say to Bono was good luck. Bono's first draft of the film was titled Godzilla vs. Deathlock, a story about a space creature coming to Earth and absorbing all the chlorophyll from the rainforest to get stronger. It would then proceed to attack humanity until it encounters Godzilla. While no concept art of the new monster exists, at least not publicly, the new kaiju's design was described as being something like Hedera's, only with a red and purple color scheme, and skull imagery to represent death. Also like Hedera, Deathla has transformations. One was to have Deathla in the shape of a mushroom, a most likely calling to the atomic bomb's mushroom cloud. It would also have a locust form which would break down the creature into tiny insects with sharp teeth. Deathla would have a vast array of powers such as eye beams, poison sludge, and paralyzing fluid to name a few. The fighting between the monsters would start in Brazil until Godzilla gets the upper hand on Deathla who is forced to retreat in his locust form. Godzilla would then follow him with his infamous flight move. Both kaiju would take their fight to Disneyland Florida, which they would then continue their fight again to Washington DC, and eventually New York City, where there was a big snowstorm happening. Godzilla wins the battle against Deathla, who retreats back to space, and Godzilla goes back to his home, which I guess is some cave in Brazil, and looks towards the audience for a wink. Wow, what a film that would have been. I would love to see how this would have been pulled off. The film was also meant to have many human perspective shots, similar to that of Cloverfield. Definitely an interesting choice given the various locations. In 2005, the second draft of the script was written, now titled Godzilla 3D to the Max. The new draft definitely toned things down a bit from the first. Deathla still comes from space, except now he lands in the Sargasso Sea instead of a rainforest. Elsewhere around the Iguazu Falls, an American reporter named Misha, I think I'm saying that right, is doing a story on the spray of Iguazu, which is said to show a rainbow only on nights of a full moon. She's also with her younger brother, Jim, whom are both recovering from the loss of their father, who lost his life, during 9-11. They soon encounter Deathla attacking a rainforest, and he soon encounters Godzilla, whom I guess was hibernating in said forest. Like the first script, the battle goes from Brazil to just New York now. Godzilla this time actually beats Deathla in a very unusual way. Godzilla jumps in the air and uses what the script calls an ultra spin tail punch, which slices Deathla in half. A very different finishing move to say the least. Godzilla then goes back to Brazil where he again performs that, which creates the spray of Iguazu for Misha and Jim. Ending on a happy note, the film was set to begin production. It had a set runtime of 40 minutes, budget of $9 million, and a team set to specific tasks on the project, in hopes of releasing it in summer of 2007. The film had a few more script changes along the way, with anything involving 9-11 being removed, and the final battle taking place in Las Vegas, rather than New York. The film was also now a collaborative effort with an American company called White Cat Productions, so things were coming together. Filming was set to begin in March of 2006, then after a year of nothing, it got pushed back further to February 2008, this time dropping White Cat from the picture. Unfortunately though, filming was still being halted for unknown reasons. In 2010, Bono had approached Legendary Pictures to help get the film going. They would help, but the picture had to be at least two hours instead of the initial 40 to 60 minutes the original idea was said to be. 
Bono had talked to Toho about Legendary's commitment to the project, and had persuaded them to start a new contract with Legendary Pictures to create their own Godzilla movie, with Bono on board as an executive producer, transforming the whole project with Deathla to a brand new story which became Godzilla 2014. And of course after that came the Monsterverse. So in the end, Bono never got to make his Hedera sequel. But then what about the cliffhanger at the end of the first Hedera movie? Did Bono always have a follow-up film in mind? Well, not exactly. At first, he never thought to make a sequel to his movie, and that the ending was meant to be a warning, that if the world continues to keep polluting, we could possibly conjure up another Hedera, similar to the message at the end of the first Godzilla movie about atomic weapons making a second Godzilla. In an interview with Sci-Fi Japan, Bono states at the end that he wanted to do a solo Hedera movie, in which the small creature attacks a rainforest, but is stopped by a new monster called Midora. It's unclear if Bono really meant to make this, or he was just being playful about it. Thanks in part to the Monsterverse, Godzilla has never been as universally popular as he is now, and it's all thanks to one man who was once said to have ruined the series. Thank you all for watching. お父さんも大変だね。